and it's not hard, it's easy, and it's cheaper than anything you're doing right now. How about that? So you can live longer, feel better, save money. Not really a downside to this, is there? The downside is you might have to give up some of the foods that stimulate your brain and get you high. And those are the foods that you like. But I'm gonna show you other foods, that's why Laurie uh, and Mary today and Julia have made some foods um, that you're gonna like that can actually extend your life. And they're cheap. Good deal, right? So, the way the body works is when you're born, when you're a little baby, anybody ever a baby? Everybody was a baby here one time? Like, your cells have a little tail on them. And this little tail is called, your genes actually, have a thing called a telomere. Now the telomere is real long and real active when you're little. And as you get older, the telomere gets shorter and weaker. And as the telomere gets shorter and weaker, you age. So we can do a genetic test on you to determine how old you are, but not by the calendar. So you could be 60 years old, 80 years old, and have a very active telomere, or you could be 30 years old and have a very weak short telomere, and it kind of is a way to judge how much time you got left. It's kind of a freaky little thing that we can almost determine where we're going. So what destroys the telomere? That's the key. Because the telomere is part of the genes, and the genes are the things that reproduce and gives you brown hair and blonde hair, blue eyes and tall or short or male or female. And so the genes are the thing that are going to control everything. And the telomere is connected to that. Now, we don't know exactly how the telomere tells the genes what to do, or vice versa, but we do know that this is a good indicator. So if you're doing certain things, they will attack the telomere. Now, some of the things we do that attack the cells and attack the telomeres are exposing ourselves to something called free radicals. Now, free radicals are like Pac-Man. They eat through things. So when you expose yourself to free radicals, the body has to do something about it. The body has to fight off these free radicals, and if the free radicals are able to attack enough cells, they can alter the, the cell reproduction. If we kill off cells fast enough, the cells start to try to reproduce at an abnormal rate, faster than they're supposed to. So we make immature, imperfect cells. Rapid reproduction of immature, imperfect cells. What's the name of that disease? Cancer. There you go. Now, sometimes it could be genetic. But many times, it's what you've done. It's self-induced. And that's sad. Because I, I, I've been in practice 30, 32 years now. And patients come in all the time, and when we take x-rays of them, we do a, a nutritional analysis on them, they all say the same thing. I wish I'd done this sooner. Very seldom does a patient ever come in and say, I'm so glad I suffered for those 15, 20, 30, 50 years. I'm so glad I did that. People say, I wish I'd done that sooner. The biggest complaint I get from patients is, why didn't I do this sooner? So hopefully today is the day that you're going to start or say that, why didn't I do it sooner, and then just start doing it. Make more sense? Okay. Mary, could you get the air conditioner turn cooler a little bit? So if we, we want to see if we can uh, start today for the rest of your life. I know it sounds cliche, but it's really easy to do. Okay. So what are free radicals? Free radicals can come from food. They can come from just sitting here. You're producing free radicals right now. And they can come from environmental exposures. Now, when I meet with my patients, and every patient that comes in, I do nutritional analysis with them. And I sit with them, and I look at their food diet and their diet diary, and I say, you know, you, this is a better choice, this is a better choice. And there's also, I want to look at your lifestyle. Because I say, for example, if we're going to eat animal products, I want you to have organic animal products. I don't eat animal products. I've been a vegan for over 30 years. I'm in my mid-50s, running circles around the 20-year-olds. So it can be done. And I don't have anything special. I don't have any special genetics or anything like that. I just don't put the things in my body that wear me out. So if I say, if you're going to eat animal products, I want you to do organic. And the reason is, when I was a kid, when you were a kid, the word organic didn't mean what it means today. The word organic meant chemistry, which is all that carbon-based uh, chemistry. But when we start talking about organic food, it means it wasn't exposed to pesticides, herbicides, tranquilizers, genetically modified foods. So organic food didn't exist when we were kids because it didn't have to because everything was organic. Do you remember when you were a kid? If you're old enough to remember, milk had flavor. Remember that? Cream and flavor, right? And bugs in it sometimes. And it would have different flavors. Remember that? Like if the, if the cow ate uh, grass or onions, it would taste like onions and cloves or whatever. Now all the milk is homogenized. 
What does that word mean? Homogenous means all the same. And so that's what's happening is we're feeding the cows a, a standard diet. And unless it's organic milk, those cows are most likely being fed soybeans and corn. In the wild, cows would not eat, well, there are no wild cows, but in nature, cows would not eat soybeans or corn. That's not a food cows would normally eat. But when they're hungry and that's all they're fed, they're going to eat it. And if you look at cows that are fed organically, uh, you know, grass, organic foods, they're higher in nutrients, higher in omega-3 fatty acids, higher in gamma lipoic acid, and lower in omega-6 acids. The commercial milk you eat is totally different. Somebody sent me an email today and there was a study that said, and there's tons of studies showing that the more dairy products you consume, the higher the rate of osteoporosis. There's a lot of studies out there showing that. This study showed the exact opposite. We think that if they do dairy products, they'll actually have less osteoporosis. And they said, what's your opinion on this? And I said, we have to ask yourself several questions. Was it organic milk? Was it non-organic milk? Who paid for the study? <laughs> kind of important. Okay. Who paid for the study? And they used 77 year old women as an average. Well, the problem is that 77 year old women, when they were young, were not, ex they had healthy diets. They had a good start. They had good telomeres. This generation doesn't have that. And I don't see, unless we change something, it's gonna get worse. So those long, healthy telomeres that a 77 year old woman had when she was a kid, I don't believe are existing as much anymore. And so we're speeding up the aging process. This generation of children, if you have kids, teens or preteens, this generation of kids is the first generation ever to have a shorter life expectancy than their parents. Wow. By five years. Wow. So if you have a kid and they eat the standard American diet, the SAD, the SAD diet, standard American diet, they have a life expectancy five years less than yours or grandkids. Wow. So we talk about life extension, I can't imagine a more important time in history to give this lecture than now. Because it's a shorter life expectancy than their parents and something's different. We have amazing changes we've made in technology for surgery, MRIs, CAT scans, nuclear medicine, cancer treatments. It's amazing what we've done. I'm fascinated. When I meet with my colleagues and they tell me that they can now take fat cells, spin them down, take out the, uh, take out the stem cells, put them in your head, and grow hair. That's the new hair transplant. You want one of those? I got a doctor who does that. I'll tell you. So, we can do the same thing with stem cells injected into your spine and regrow cartilage. How cool is that? And yet, five year short life expectancy. So a lot of it has to do with what they're being exposed to in the environment. So free radicals. I have to talk about the seven deadly sins because I talk about it in every lecture. The seven foods you really want to cut back or cut out of your diet. Alcohol, meat, it's in your notes. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Collectively, you all thought one thought. Everything. My God, that's everything. <laughs> My whole diet, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. But those are the foods that are going to speed up the aging process. Free radicals can also come from car exhaust, artificial lighting, screens. How many screens are we exposed to every day? Computer screens, phone screens. Okay, TV screens, right. So this is all low, low level, what's called electromagnetic frequencies that can change or heat up your body. I remember years ago I did a, I did a radio show and my IT guy talked about cell phones. If you put it next to your head, it can increase the risk of cancer. And he called me up and he says, you're an idiot. You know what you're talking about. He says you're a fear monger. And I, he says, I agree with everything else you said, but this show specifically, I totally disagree with you. I said, okay. It's a song by Asia, Only Time Will Tell. Well, guess what? That's right. Now we're showing that if you put a cell phone next to your head, we can see the, the changes in the body. Kids' skulls are thinner than adults. It makes it a lot worse. So you should never put your cell phone next to your ear. And if you read the instructions in your cell phone, oddly enough, it will say, do not put the cell phone next to your ear. Anybody ever read that in their instructions? It's in there. You just never read it. It says, hold it a little bit away from your ear. I use an earpiece. I never would put the, uh, if I have to, I, I hold it away, away from my ear. But 99% of the time, if I'm on the phone, I have an earpiece. 
plug it into my phone, then I'm fine. Okay. okay? So that's something I want you to do because this is modern things we're doing to speed up the aging process. So we're attacking these telomeres, we're speeding up the aging process, breaking down our collagen, we get wrinkles, right? We all get that gray hair. Interesting, a while ago I found my first gray hair. It's on my chest. And I said, something wrong. So I said, so, what is it? What would cause gray hair? So I did a hair analysis on myself. We do this in the office. We cut a little bit of hair, send it off for an analysis. I was low in selenium. I started taking selenium, my gray hair went away. Done. No more gray hair. So the problem wasn't that I had gray hair. The problem was I was low in selenium. Gray hair was a symptom. When I found out what it was, it was great. In fact, a friend of mine came in yesterday, and uh, we were talking. She, she lives out of town, and she came in, and she said, um, she said, I tried the selenium thing, and it didn't work. I said, OK, so your gray hair issue is different than my gray hair issue. So she came in yesterday, we did hair analysis, and we'll figure out what it is. And the hair says, OK, you're short, low in this, 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 and this. We'll put together a supplement protocol, which should be fine. But gray hair is a symptom. Wrinkles are a symptom. Aches and pains are a symptom. And the problem is that most of us are treating our symptoms, we're not treating the cause. And the cause of aging is usually self-induced. You did it to yourself. So if you're doing alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're speeding up the aging process. Your body needs nutrients in order to work. We are a sack of chemicals. That's all we are. If you put good chemicals in, it's going to work properly. If you put bad chemicals in, it's not going to work properly. A good example is a battery. Anybody ever buy cheap batteries? Do they work real well? No, by expensive battery works well. Why? Good chemicals. Generate electricity. And all we are is electricity. Our brain is sending electrical impulses down the spine, out the nerves to every cell in the body. The heart, the lungs, the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, the gallbladder. Everything is getting an electrical impulse from your brain. Your ear is hearing me right now as an electrical impulse. <coughs> and so what happens is if we don't create the right chemicals, put the right chemicals in to create electricity, we can't send the neurological impulses to the cells, and the cells can't work. So the question, the rhetorical question is, why would you put something in your body that you know is going to cause damage? A famous guy once said, forgive them, they know not what they do. Guess what? After today, now you know. No more excuses. So if you're going to put alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweet in your body, you're speeding up the aging process. When I say sugar, and this is the big one, because sugar combines with protein and creates something called advanced glycation end products. And if we take the first letter of each one, strangely enough, it spells out A, G, E. Advanced glycation end products is when protein and sugars come together and they get into your connective tissue and eat away your connective tissue. And when connective tissue eats away, you get wrinkles. But it's not just your facial wrinkles. Think about this. If you have wrinkles in your face, what do you think is going on inside? This is only a small portion of your whole body. Imagine your liver, your spleen, your thyroid, your kidneys, your ovaries, your prostate. All of those are being attacked by advanced glycation end products. <coughs> and we don't want that, do we? So the one thing you have to give up is sugar. Is that hard to do? Yes. And the reason is that when sugar gets in your body, it stimulates the pleasure centers in your brain and you get hot. And in fact, there are studies done, and we've done this with rats and mice. I don't know if it's rats or mice. And we had one group, uh, we took one group and we gave them uh, sugar. Then we took the sugar away and we gave them cocaine. Then we took the cocaine away and gave them either one. They can choose either one. Which one do you think 100% of the mice choose? <laughs> they had cocaine and they chose sugar. Now cocaine is addicting, it's illegal. Sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. So if it's hard to get rid of it, you're right. I had somebody call me the other day to do phone consultations. And she called me up and she said, I'm addicted to sugar. I said, you are? She goes, no, no, I really am. I said, yeah, I know, you really are. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> and she's like, oh, I, I get it. Because when those dopamine receptor sites in your brain, those pleasure centers in your brain light up, baby, you'll do anything. You get real stupid just for pleasure. Right? Anybody ever do something stupid in the name of pleasure? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> And so what happens is you're thinking, I shouldn't be doing this. How about that pint of ice cream, right? Remember that? Yeah. If I eat it, then it won't be here. <laughs> you thought we were the only ones who thought that. I think that way too. So when you put sugar in your body, stimulate the pleasure centers of the brain, the only way to kick the habit is to kick the habit. 
If you ever went to an AA meeting, what's the one thing alcoholics can't do? Drink. Drink. Right? You can't have an alcohol on Sunday. You can't have it on your birthday. You can't have it because it's New Year's Eve. No. Because once the alcohol gets into the brain, it signals the pleasure centers in the brain, and you're off the wagon, they call it, right? And you start all over again with your chips. I want you to consider sugar your addiction. Because it is. It is your addiction. It's everyone's addiction. And so if you have breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, they are sugars. When the sugar gets into your body, it's stimulating the pleasure centers in the brain. Your sugar is binding with the protein, creating advanced glycated like end products, which get into connective tissue and speed up the aging process. Sugar is an acid, which is like free radicals, and it attacks the telomeres. Remember telomeres, those little things on genes that tell me how old I am? And so acid foods are going to be attacking the telomeres. And the acid foods are the seven we just discussed. So step number one to stop the aging process is you've got to get the bad food out of the house. There is no other way to do this. If it's in the house, you're going to eat it. Because I'm going to eat it. Because you and you and you and you and you are going to eat it because that's how a brain is wired. It's not willpower. That word is silly. There's no such thing as willpower. Because I have been in that position. I can't eat a cookie. I can't eat a box of cookies, but I can't eat a cookie. Because once I have one, I don't care. I don't care there's consequences. Damn the torpedoes, right? I'm gonna go ahead and eat these whole, the whole thing. And that's what's happening to you. So when you get the sugar out of your life, it takes about four to five days for you to get over your addiction. So the nice part is it only takes four or five days. Get it out of the house, and then start eating good foods. Everybody had some of the salad? Is that credible? You notice, I'll tell you this. Have anybody, anybody ever been to our Thomas Grill in Atlanta? Okay, yes. Richard Thomas, president of Kentucky Fried Chicken at one point, founder of Bojangles. A lot of people don't know that. Several years ago, realized what he was doing when he was feeding people, sold the whole chain of Bojangles, and opened up our Thomas Grill. Pretty cool stuff. And Richard's there a lot. Short little guy, gray hair, you'll, you'll see. So Richard came to me one day, he says, what's your favorite recipe in the world? I said, it's an avocado mango salad. He said, give it to me. It's okay. So I gave him the recipe, he puts it on, he puts it as a special in the, in the restaurant one day. I said, okay. So I see it on the main, it's, they have a little reader board, it says avocado mango salad. So I go back a couple weeks later, it's not there anymore. I said, how come, what's, the salad's not on the menu anymore? He goes, no, I took it off the menu. I said, why? He says, I ate it all. <laughs> And now it's on the menu. It's a, it's a full-time thing on the menu. The number, it's on Peachtree Street. Yeah. Okay. We may have some gift certificates. We do give you some before we leave today. Ask Mary. Um, now it's, it's the number one selling food in the restaurant. How about is that? Dr. Joe's mango salad. So that's why we made that for you today. So easy, so simple, so quick. Impress your friends. You got a date, make this for them. Ooh, you really know how to cook. No, no, not really. I know I cut out. <laughs> I can slice, that's about it. But it's a simple, easy thing that's going to give you a little bit of sugar. Now, here's the key. I put sugar in here. Avocados, not much sugar. Mangoes, sugar. But what I'm giving you in the salad is a lot of fiber. This is where you can have a little bit of sugar if it's the right kind of sugar. The fiber is going to slowly push the sugar through your colon, and you're going to get a slow release of sugar. So your pancreas is going to release a little bit of insulin. And the insulin is going to carry the sugar to the cells. And the cells are going to utilize the sugar, the glucose, the, the, the sugar that it uses. The fructose that's found in there has to go into your liver. It doesn't go to your cells. It goes to your liver, where the liver converts the, the fructose into glucose. <coughs> then it's sent out into the body for utilization. So if you're eating fruit, you're giving yourself small amounts of, of sugar with high fiber, pushing it through the colon, and you're going to get a slow release. The fructose isn't absorbed right away. It has to go through the liver, and you're in good shape. The problem is that somebody along the way realized that if fruit tastes good, what if I took the juice out? I concentrate the sugar, it tastes better. So you can't eat fruit juice. It's too much sugar. And after 25 grams of fructose, which is about three or four pieces of fruit, the fructose goes into the liver, converts into uric acid. <coughs> uric acid gets into your joints and it hurts. I'm a chiropractor. My team of doctors are chiropractors. 
We deal with pain management all day, every day, seven days a week. There is not a day that goes by that I'm not either seeing a patient or consulting a patient on pain management. And there hasn't been in the past 32 years. I'm on vacation. You ask me questions. Okay, I'm on a cruise. Hey, you're Dr. Joe. Yeah, I'll listen to your radio show. Oh, can I ask you a question? No. <laughs> I went to a party Saturday night, I got from here to where the camera was, in two hours. I know you hate this, but can I ask you ten questions? Everybody asks you questions, can I ask you? <laughs> but I, don't, I really don't mind, I really don't. But you, if, you gotta cut out fruit juice, because that's your sugar. So don't think that you're drinking fruit juice, you're doing yourself a good thing. No, it's pure, it's fructose, which is the worst kind of sugar, well not the worst kind of sugar, but a horrible kind of sugar. It gets into your liver, converts into uric acid, uric acid gets to your joints and it hurts. As a chiropractor, you come to see us, we want to get your bones lined up properly to unpinch the nerves, but we also want to do a nutritional evaluation to get you off the things that are making the pain worse. Follow? Fructose converts into uric acid. Uric acid prevents the body from producing nitric oxide. What the heck is that? Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. Opens up your blood vessels. There's kids here, but it opens up the blood vessels to your brain. Happy parts? Got it? Okay? <laughs> your arms, your legs, you need vasodilation. You need good circulation. And if you're eating too much fructose, fructose creates uric acid. Uric acid prevents nitric oxide. You can't open up your blood vessels. You don't have good circulation. Circulation brings nutrients to the joints and carries away waste products. You're not going to heal as fast as I want you to. How about that? And now, if you listen to my show last Sunday night, if you have inflammation in your body, it, 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 it activates cells in your brain called microglia. When microglia are activated, follow me on this, there's an amino acid called tryptophan that you eat in all your food. Tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain. Serotonin is the neurotransmitter that calms you down and helps you focus. And it's your happy neurotransmitter. Tryptophan has to be create neurotrypt. Are She's thinking. I, can, I see the look at her. She's thinking. So it converts into serotonin. Tryptophan into serotonin. If the microglia are activated, it no longer converts in, most, most of it doesn't convert into serotonin. It converts into a chemical. So what happens is the brain, the, tryp the tryptophan now becomes a component in the brain that causes anxiety and depression. So what does that all mean? What that means is that if I have joint pain, if I have swelling in my body, if I'm eating alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, I have an inflammation in my body. The inflammation is activating the microglia in my brain, which is preventing tryptophan from becoming serotonin. It's becoming an anxiety chemical in my brain. So depression can be linked to the amount of inflammation you have in your body. Follow that? How far back? I am Dr. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Inflammation prevents the brain from properly producing serotonin. It produces chemicals that actually make you anxious and depressed. So you can have knee pain, back pain, chemical inflammation, the food we just talked about, that can lead to depression. Depression essentially speeds up the aging process. Follow? So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, you're thinking, ah, I can take an aspirin, it's no big deal. But that inflammation is now affecting brain function. I'm going to cover that tonight again on my show. So if you have pain, there's an inflammatory component, something's wrong. If you're eating a bad diet, there's inflammation. You might have gas, bloating, diarrhea, acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, colitis, all inflammatory diseases, arthritis. All inflammatory diseases, which are now affecting brain function, which is leading to depression and anxiety, agitation, and that essentially speeds up the aging process. So sugar's a biggie. Of all the seven deadly sins, you've got to cut back on the sugar, because that's the hardest one to cut back on. Artificial sweeteners. Aspartame, for example. Aspartame breaks down to three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Don't worry about chemistry. Aspartic acid, when it gets into your brain, is what's called an excitotoxin. It speeds up the brain function. It causes the brain to fire faster than it's supposed to. 
and can burn out your brain cells. Wow. Number one side effect of aspartame ingestion is headaches. So when patients come to my office and they have headaches, my team of doctors and I, we always check their neck. You have a pinched nerve in the neck, very common cause of headaches. But we also have to look at their diet. And when they write down what they're eating, and I see they're drinking diet sodas three and four times a day, you've got to cut out the diet sodas. But doc, when I cut out the diet sodas, my headaches get worse. How about coffee? Anybody come off coffee and get headaches? In my first book, my new book, by the way, we titled it today. Can we title it today, right? It's... Yes. What's the title? DIY Guide to Extreme Health. DIY, Do-It-Yourself Guide to Extreme Health. Okay, and it's done. I promise you, we have the pictures and everything. It's just got to go to publishers. It'll be awesome. But this book, I have a chapter here called Kicking the Habit. When I say kicking the habit, you want to get off coffee. It's a tough thing. Coffee is an acid. Acid eats away at things. Remember acids, free radicals? So if you drink coffee, you can take one cup of coffee, put it in front of you, and take one tablespoon every hour. It'll take maximum three to four days to get off your coffee. If you cook cold turkey, the brain starts hurting. Why does the brain hurt? Coffee doesn't give you energy. Coffee robs your body of energy. Doesn't make sense. In your body, you have a chemical being released in your brain called adenosine. Adenosine is released and gets absorbed into the brain in adenosine receptor sites, and it makes you tired. So when you're tired, the denison is getting into the denison receptor sites and your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, shutting down so the body can heal. Caffeine blocks up those denison receptor sites so caffeine can't be absorbed. But denison block, I'm sorry, ca caffeine blocks up the denison receptor sites so denison can't be absorbed, you don't get tired. So it's not that you're not, you're not getting energy, you're just not getting tired. But your body's smarter than you. Your body says, or your brain says, I gotta get tired. I'm gonna make more adenosine receptor sites to try to absorb this adenosine. So what do you have to do? You have to drink more what? There you go. So the more coffee you drink, the more effect you have on the brain. When you come off it, you have those blazing headaches. So a little bit of caffeine every hour will slowly wean you off the caffeine. Coffee is one of the most highly sprayed foods in the world sprayed with chemicals, pesticides. And a lot of the pesticides affect the bug's hormones. Hormones and aging, here we go. So if you're putting, we have a little bit of chemical that's gonna affect the bug's hormone. The pesticides do one of two things. Essentially, they either kill the bug or they make it sterile. So they can't make more bug babies. But, and it does it to us too. Okay, that's why the more chemicals you put in your body, the more problems you're gonna have. Coffee is one of the most highly sprayed foods in the world. So, of the seven deadly sins, I will negotiate with you on every one of them. I shouldn't, but I will. Because I understand that you ain't gonna do it if I don't give you a little leeway. So if you're gonna do coffee, organic only. Organic decaf, preferably. No coffee is the best. There's no such thing as decaffeinated coffee, by the way. It's a misnomer. All coffee has caffeine. If we took all the caffeine out of it, it would have no flavor, and you wouldn't drink it. So some of the fancy coffee shops that you spend 10 bucks a, a cup for, oh, silly rabbits. <laughs> you spend 10 bucks a cup for coffee, regular, and then they have decaf. Decaffeinated, by definition, means less than the original brand. So there's really, as far as I know, there's not a strong definition as to what that means. So less than the original brand. So when you go to a coffee shop, it has a lot of caffeine, that's why you like it. Because caffeine is a stimulant, it gets you high. Decaffeinated means we take a little bit out. So the fancy coffee shop coffee decaffeinated has more caffeine than the regular coffee you would brew at home. That's why you like the decaffeinated at the fancy coffee shop. So decaffeinated preferably, organic, absolutely. Do what? Tea, the same tea is okay, I prefer you do organic if you can. Of course, and one of the problems with tea bags is many times the, the wrapping has chlorine in it, which is a highly toxic chemical. They put chlorine in feminine hygiene products and that causes toxic shock syndrome. So if you're going to use feminine products, I highly recommend that you use organic unbleached. But you're putting bleach in a very sensitive mucous membrane. Not a good idea. 
that bleach gets in the body, it's a chlorine, chlorine gas is toxic, chlorine is not toxic, and causes all sorts of problems. I give you a two hour lecture on chlorine, but I don't have time today. Okay? So if you're gonna do tea, get the loose tea if you can. That's fine. Loose tea. The loose tea. Tea that's not in a bag. Okay, if you have a loose tea, you can just have a tea ball, you know, boil it yourself type thing or strain it, and that's fine too. But tea is fine. But tea does have caffeine. In the world of caffeine, let's cover that as we go off on a tangent here. Coffee's up here, number one, okay? Then there's mate. Anybody hear mate? Matein, M-A-T-E. Mate is, is, it has a chemical called matein, which is essentially caffeine. So you have coffee, then if you want to come off the coffee, go to mate tea, M-A-T-E. It's the national drink of Brazil, I think. Argentina, national drink of Argentina. Okay, then you have black tea, green tea, white tea, and then you have herbal teas. Look at any store. Look at the, all the herbal tea choices they have. You can do that. It's okay. I can't do caffeine. I get a headache. <coughs> Whether it's coffee, tea, chocolate, I get a headache. So I just can't do it anyway. Okay? But caffeine, we talked about how it works on the adenosine receptors. We good so far there? So the other thing we have to talk about, again, I, I can give you a, this will be a weekend seminar, but I'm only going to give it to you in an hour here or so, is something called enzymes. Now, when you're a child, you're born with a ton of enzymes. And your saliva produces enzymes, and your pancreas produces enzymes, your liver produces enzymes. Enzymes do a bunch of different things. One thing they do is they break down food. So if I put something in my body, the enzyme's gonna start to dissolve it. So enzymes are good. Enzymes also can reassemble food. I look at enzymes as kind of like a matchmaker. You have this nutrient and this nutrient, and we have to make eye tissue. So the enzyme says, hey, you and you get together, create an eye tissue. And then you and you get together and create some liver. And you two go make some, some, some uh, toenails. So the enzymes can break things down, reassemble them. Enzymes are also big in anti-inflammatories. Inflammation, remember inflammation going into the brain, preventing tryptophan from becoming serotonin and going into a, a, a chemical that creates, a, creates anxiety. So enzymes are anti-inflammatory. So here's the thing with enzymes. If you eat anything cooked above 110 degrees, you've destroyed the enzymes. How many of you eat food all day, every day that's cooked above 110 degrees? Microwave? Everybody. Microwave. Oh, yeah. Do I have time to cover a microwave? <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> get them out of the house, that's your rule. Sugar and microwaves. <laughs> and annoying relatives. <laughs> So ends what I have left. <laughs> no friends, only annoying relatives. <laughs> but if you cook anything above 110 degrees, it doesn't matter if it's an organic carrot or a piece of steak, the enzymes are, are destroyed. Enzymes break down inflammation, they reconnect things, and they fight off infections. Because viruses, germs, bacteria, one of the treatments we need to use is enzyme therapy. So if you have a cold or a flu, one of the things I recommend you do is take enzyme supplements. But when you take them makes the difference. If I take an enzyme with my meal, it's gonna help digest the food. If I take an enzyme between meals on an empty stomach, they get absorbed into the blood and that's when they act as an anti-inflammatory. Pretty cool. But it's not, what, see, not only what you take, it's when you take it. So if I have an injury, sprain my ankle, I like kayaking, I hurt my shoulder, whatever. What I'm gonna, like this weekend when I fell off the dock, I got some big right here, okay? I'll take enzymes between meals, the enzymes will get in there and break up the inflammation. But that's kind of a neat little thing. Now, I'm a vegan, I don't eat animal products, so I take my enzymes, I use plant-based enzymes. There are also animal-based enzymes. Depending on what you eat, if you eat meat, it's okay to eat animal enzymes if you want to, just make sure they're organic. organic. There you go, see how smart you are? 45 minutes, we got smart you guys got. <laughs> so enzymes are gonna be a key to help with the aging process. Because when we're kids, we're producing all these enzymes. We have in our saliva, our liver, our pancreas. But what happens is as we get older, we don't produce those amount of enzymes anymore. And that really is part of the aging process. Our dropping of enzymes. So that's why I recommend you have something raw, at least one thing with every meal. Preferably the whole meal. So now what happens is this. You have to start to rethink what a meal is. 
So what happens is you think of a meal, picture a meal, right? You picture steak and potatoes and maybe some steamed broccoli and maybe a little salad this big, okay? And then a cup, you know, cup, some cup of coffee, some cheesecake. Everything there except that little bit of salad is cooked <coughs> above 110 degrees. The enzymes are gone. So if I don't put enzymes in my body, my body has to produce enzymes to digest that food. If I eat raw food, the enzymes in the food are going to digest it for it, for itself. It's essentially going to digest itself. Make sense? So I need you to consider, as part of our anti-aging anti protocol, is I need you to add enzymes to your diet. Raw food and as a supplement. And that's one of the secrets that I use <coughs> to turn back time. And you can do this. And there are even certain foods that are found, that we found now that can actually increase the telomeres. Remember telomeres 45 minutes ago? So Little tails that we find on genes that are actually determining how old we are. And there's one product called resveratrol. Resveratrol is a supplement, and studies have shown it can actually activate and make the telomere a little more active and longer. R-E-S-V, I don't know, it's school in New Jersey, I don't know how to spell. <laughs> a barbed wire fence you around my school. Yeah. That's right. I had a barbed wire fence around my school with the barbed wire pointing in. Now, if anybody knows, I'm born in Jersey. But with the barbed wire pointing in, so we couldn't get out. <laughs> it wasn't preventing people from getting in, it was preventing us from getting out. <laughs> no, just, and it was there until about three years ago, they finally took it down. So, resveratrol is a chemical that you can take, or a supplement you can take, and one of the places that made big news a while ago that you find resveratrol is in... Red wine. Red wine. It was big news. Resveratrol is high in red wine, so you should drink red wine, it's good for your heart. It's not the wine that's good for your heart. It's the grapes that are good for your heart. It's the red. Why is it white wine good for your heart? Why is it scotch good for your heart? Beer, vodka. It's the red part, not the wine part. And the red grapes, because they're really rich in colors, anything that's really dark in colors usually has a lot more antioxidants, preventing free radical damage. Following? So what happens is you can drink wine, but there's a catch. And this, they were very smart when they did this. They never talked about this, but I got to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> grapes produce resveratrol when they are attacked by a fungus. So when fungus start to grow on the grapes, the grapes produce resveratrol to fight off the fungus. Follow that? The problem is with not with commercial grapes is they're sprayed with antifungal. So there's no fungus, so there's no resveratrol. Grapes are like, I don't gotta produce that, I'm cool. So the only grapes that are gonna give you any amount of, a rec recognizable amount, I should say, of resveratrol are gonna be organic grapes. So if you're going to drink wine, here's the rule. It's got to be organic, but here's the other rule. If you want to have a medicinal effect, enough resveratrol to actually have an impact, you have to drink about a case a day. <laughs> so she just wrote down, Dr. Joe said, drink a case of wine. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's right. But Dr. Joe said, officer, officer. <laughs> So you can take resveratrol supplements, but the key is this. If you don't expose yourself to alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, bread, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas, you're not going to need the resveratrol. This is the thing that gets me, even in my own profession. This supplement helps this. Yeah, but why do you even need this supplement? Well, because I did this. You know, I need resveratrol because I just destroyed my body. Now, I'm a big fan of supplements. I have my own line of supplements. I, I recommend supplements to everybody. But you also then have to stop to, 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 uh, causing the problem, not just treating the symptoms. As a chiropractor, patients come to me. I've got neck pain. I've got back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, acid reflux, heartburn, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. That was my first patient. Okay, so. And so I sit down with them, and I say, listen, the reason you have pain, the pain is not the problem. The reason you have the pain is the problem. In most cases, there's a pinched nerve. And a bone moves out of place and pinches a nerve and it hurts. So here comes logic. If I'm doing this and it hurts, how do we stop the pain? Stop doing it. 
So I work with doctors that are pain management experts. Orthopedic, I'm meeting Thursday with an orthopedic surgeon who wants me to open up an office within his office. So that's something we may be doing on the south side of town soon. And so the orthopedists, the, neuro, the neurosurgeons, I'm the only chiropractor in the state who's board certified in pain management. So all the pain management doctors like me. Ooh, you, you approach things differently. And so we get together and I say, okay, we've got to get the bones put back in place. We've got to get the muscles balanced. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, usually the stomach has to be pulled down away from the diaphragm. The stomach is in the wrong place. And so we can do all this physically. We then remove the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. Then we look at your diet. We find out what you're doing to speed up the aging process. We may do a hair analysis. We may do other analysis to see specifically what you need. And then we can put together a protocol to help reverse the damage that you've done and stop you from doing it again. And that's what I call, what do we, what do we call it on radio? Joe Obamacare. Joe there you go, right? <laughs> Walked into a room the other day, three people, hey, Joe Obama's here. So, <laughs> got a nickname. So Joe Obamacare is getting to the cause of the problem. Obamacare is buying insurance. That probably is going to pay for it. Yeah, but Joe Obamacare is getting to the cause of the problem, so hopefully you won't need the insurance. Because even if you have to use your insurance, you just pay the premiums. You didn't get to that $6,000 deductible and $100 co-pays yet, have you? Oh, no, 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 no. You find that out when you walk into the doctor's office and they say, oh, guess what? And you say, but I have insurance. And you say, yeah, but this is what the insurance says you have to pay before we can even treat you. So then the question comes up is, why do I have insurance? <laughs> it's not going to pay for anything. Yes. The what? And you get, well, I mean, you have to have it by law now, but I mean, the, the rhetorical question is, this isn't doing anything. There is no good insurance anymore. There's bad and worse. Okay, so there's no good insurance anymore. Unless somebody else is paying it for you. Then I guess it's good. But I don't have that. So you have to get to the cause of the problems. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, those are signs that you have something wrong. Acid reflux, headaches, fatigue. These are signs that something's wrong. We in our office try to figure out what's wrong. Why can't I get off my sugar? Why do I have the acid reflux all the time? Why can't I lose weight? Why do I have these headaches? Then we get to the cause. And when we do that, you start seeing progress in most cases. And then we look at the diet. We, get, we put together a supplement protocol. And we want to give you tons of <laughs> antioxidants. Because the antioxidants are going to fight free radicals. It's not just food. It's not just inflammation from that neck pain and back pain affecting brain function. It's also from artificial lighting. It's from car exhaust, perfumes, hairsprays, deodorants, shampoos, car, uh, carpet cleaners, uh, things you plug in the wall that give you air fresheners, spray air fresheners. All of these things are free radicals and what we call xenoestrogens. They're chemical, xeno means foreign, foreign estrogens getting into your body affecting your hormone levels. I don't know if you've noticed lately, but kids are a lot bigger than they were when you were a kid. Yes. Okay? And I've seen boys now developing breasts. There's a whole cottage industry in plastic surgery removing uh, breast, uh, boy breasts. They're being exposed to so much estrogen that their body is actually starting to act like a girl. And estrogen causes you to lay down fat. Fat produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat, which produces estrogen. And that's why this generation is in deep trouble. They're getting exposed to so many more chemicals than we ever could have even thought of. And we have, their bodies can't handle them. So it's really important that you take care of yourself so you can take care of them and that you take care of them. So I would suggest you get a normally functioning nervous system. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, if you've ever been in a car accident, if the car was damaged, you were damaged. 100% of the time. 32 years of practice, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of patients I've seen. I've never seen a car where the car was damaged where the patient wasn't ever occupant. Then we gotta check the digestive system. Eight, about 85% of my patients have some type of digestive problem. And then we gotta look at your diet. Years ago somebody came and they said, Dr. Joe, what would you consider the world's best supplement? And I said, if somebody could take fruits and vegetables and add enzymes to that, that would be, a, I put it in a, in a pill form, that would be the perfect supplement. So I sat down with my chemist out in California and I created Dr. Joe's Essential Source. About 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables, remember enzymes, then we add enzymes to that, then we add prebiotics, good bacteria, probiotics, and then we add a complete multivitamin. 
And so one scoop of this is about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables. Good stuff. Okay. Then I realized most people were too acidic. Acid speeds up the aging process. So I said, what are the most alkalizing foods in the world? They would be wheatgrass, barley grass, and alfalfa grass. We juice that, same thing, take the water out at a very low temperature. And so I made Dr. Joe super greens. Then I add omega-3 fatty acids to it from algae. <coughs> algae is the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids. Fish don't make omega-3 fatty acids. Fish get it from eating algae. And then you eat fish. Why don't you eat the algae? Pretty simple, okay? Cut out the middle fish. <laughs> and then I add dults. The reason I add dults to this is because it's seaweed that has iodine in it. Everyone in this room, I would suspect if we did a test on you, would be deficient in iodine. We don't eat enough iodine. So I eat that every single day. Not a day that goes by I don't take it. And like today, I'll have it twice. I'll have it tonight. Oh, I mix it. I like coconut milk. I'll mix it with coconut milk, almond milk. Again, I'm a vegan, so I'll take whatever milks I have and I'll drink. I'll just shake it up. A scoop of each. Okay? Also, I have a few more seconds here. And then I'll go up to questions. So think about your questions as I, I talk about this. I need you to get outside. <laughs> get outside in the sun. Not for long. Maybe 20 minutes, a half hour a day. But the sun is going to give, it really recharges our batteries. And what happens is we live indoors all day, every day and we're being exposed to all these chemicals, you need to get outside to get the, the, the far infrared radiation into the body, far infrared, that's good radiation. Short doses, too much will kill you. And this is interesting. You go on vacation and you bring sunscreen, right? And you lather yourself up with sunscreen. And let's assume we're going to a tropical place. You ever see the locals use sunscreen? Never. They, they look at us going, what are you doing? <laughs> they wear long sleeve shirts and long pants to cover up from the sun hats. They just don't get exposed to the sun. Much smarter than we are. We're blathering it on and sitting in the sun. Isn't that creating a problem, you know? So when I go out, what, big hats, t-shirts, long pants, you know, get some scrubs if you want to, wear those, and that's a much better choice. But about 20 minutes of at least arms, legs, and face in the sun. Drive with your window open, stick your arm out if that's the best you can do. But the sunlight is actually gonna help slow down the aging process, too much of it will speed up the aging process.